If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. So, we just got a new ban list. For modern, two cards. For standard, three cards. I've not brushed up on my history as much as I'd like, but isn't that a record for standard specifically? Three cards being banned in standard? Certainly in the time that I've been playing, the most is two. Jason Misty. But here we have three all happening at the same time. Not just banned in the same standard, at the same time. But we're going to start off with modern because one of those cards is super salient to me. And that is Gitaxian Probe. We'll start off with that one. As you can probably guess by the channel name, Infect is my main deck, and I run Simic Infect. I run Gitaxian Probe. I don't have to run Simic in order to run Gitaxian Probe, but the opportunity cost is the lowest in that deck. I would not recommend someone, prior to this of course, recommend them playing Infect without some number of Gitaxian Probe, even if they're not blue, because the information is that valuable. See, in Modern, we have this turn 4 rule. It's not that you can't win before turn 4, it's that, because if that were the case, decks like Infect and Pyromancer Storm and Reanimator would not be allowed to exist, they would just all be banned. No, it's that you can't win before turn 4 too consistently and without giving your opponent the chance to interact. A deck like Infect, for instance, you can definitely interact. It's not Bogles. The creatures in Infect are awfully fragile, and there are only about a hundred million ways for a Glistener Elf to die. Rip Glistener Elf. But, that being the case, Gitaxian Probe helps to switch the, uh, the dynamic. Usually, it's... It, so I'm T1 Glistener Elf. And the T does not mean tier, it's actually turn. Turn one Glistener Elf. You would think by that name that all I do is jam the T1 Glistener Elf every time and just YOLO it. But if, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've realized that's not actually what I do. Rarely is it the case that I cast a turn one Glistener Elf, uh, certainly in the blind. There are some exceptions. If I have a hard read, or I just know what my opponent is on, and know that I don't have to worry about turn one removal, say, for example, in a Pyromancer Storm match, I need to <laughs> beat them as quickly as I possibly can, so I'll cast the T1 Glistener Elf there. But also, if I have a Gitaxian Probe, see, I get to see whether my opponent has removal or not, and if they don't, well, hit the pedal to the metal, it's time to go in. That is not the way that they mean for that to be. Notwithstanding that you get a card out of it, that's obviously crucial, but even if it's just look at your opponent's hand for zero mana, that in and of itself is almost the majority of the card, if you will, especially for the Infect player. Now, Infect is not the only deck that can utilize it so well, but Infect probably gains more than any other deck because its game plan revolves around being able to play around your opponent's removal. And there's no longer, with Gitaxian Probe, a guessing game as to whether... Do I jam the T1 Glistener out? I have my, uh, <laughs> my video, A Journey into the Mind of an Infect Player. Check that one out. I ask myself, to Glistener Elf or not to Glistener Elf, I wish I had a Gitaxian Probe. That very line. That's how important it is to the deck. And of course, as happened in that video, if you try to go in on turn one without an assurance, you could just get bolted. <laughs> okay, but magic humor videos notwithstanding, although isn't my baby adorable, uh, magic humor, humor videos notwithstanding, it's probably, I think, better, even though I run Gitaxian Probe as a four of, it's probably better that Gitaxian Probe get banned. I haven't even gotten to the rest of my argument, just when we're talking about Infect. Infect right now is probably too good. I, I've gone on the record saying that by the definition that I use, which admittedly is not the definition everyone uses, Infect will always be a tier 2 deck. 
Because while it has some very favorable matchups, it has some very unfavorable matchups. But those matchups being unfavorable, which is to say those that are heavy on spot removal, like Burn or Grixis Delver or so on, those are contingent on the Infect player having to play around that removal. And if they don't, it's not so unfavored. Now, other decks can utilize it as well. Death Shadow Zoo not only gets a card out of it, but gets to lower their life total, which for them is exactly what they want to be doing. So, it that's another deck that's extremely prominent in the meta right now, so it will be nerfed as well as Infect. Pyromancer Storm hasn't seen a ton of play lately, but this will also hurt Pyromancer Storm. There's nothing that can really replace it, because anything else would cost some mana. There, <laughs> there's no... I, I guess if you're a if you are a Death Shadow Zoo player, just run Street Rates, right? That's not giving you any information, but that can't be countered either. All is even as far as you're concerned, usually, but the Pyromancer Storm does not have that luxury. That pilot does not have the luxury of playing something that doesn't add to Storm, doesn't reveal any information, isn't blue. <laughs> I guess that matters sometimes, right? I'm gonna miss playing with Gitaxian Pro, but even so, I actually think it's better for Modern as a whole. It will slow the format down. That is true, and I think that that's a good thing. It's probably also going to push Modern in conjunction with Fatal Push being printed. It's going to push Modern against Infect, but maybe towards Bogles. More spot removal, more low to the ground removal might be good for Bogles. Now, Caution, caution, because more fatal pushes might mean more Lilianas of the Veil, which would end up hurting you. Sorry, Bogles players. But yeah, it's about to be real rough <laughs> for Infect. You're losing Gitaxian Probe, and Lightning Bolt and Path to Exile are already... Lightning Bolt is the most played non-land card in Modern. Path to Exile, I think, is not number two anymore. But Gitaxian Probe might have been. All right, and now here comes Fatal Push. So it's it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be rough. That being said, as rough as it is for me, at least I'm not T1 Golgari Grave Troll because the GG Troll gets banned. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Whew. If you are, oh, who is it? Which one is it from the girlfriend bracket that plays Dredge? Is it Aaron? Oh, whichever one you are. I'm sorry, my heart goes out to you. I I play Dredge. It's not my main deck, but I play Dredge. I play my own homebrew deck. It's an uh, army of the Dredged. That That's something I'll get to in just a second, but I don't think that the problem is necessarily... It, it is Golgari Grave Troll. It is Dredge. It is the enabler that makes everything else happen. Dredge, if you've seen it in Legacy, if you've seen it in Vintage, is the kind of, especially in Vintage, it's supposed to win game one. And then games two and three are, did my, did the Dredge opponent find their answers, find their sideboard answers? If so, you lose. If not, Dredge wins. That's not the dynamic they're looking for in Modern, <laughs> especially in a format that doesn't have days and force of will and whatnot. The games aren't supposed to be that deterministic. Um, and so, that's, uh, and they say here, Dredge, the mechanic, and the deck has a negative impact on Modern by pushing the format too far toward a battle of sideboards. Yeah, uh, if you're the Dredge player, you, you're, when you build your deck, do you want to build regular Dredge or Fearless Dredge? Fearless Dredge, does not respect the opponent's sideboard. They just assume if they have it, they're going to win. So there's no reason to put Nature's Claim in the sideboard, for instance. Everyone else in the format, Relic of Progenitus, that's personally been my answer as an Infect player. But then there's Tormod's Crypt, and Nile Spellbomb, and Rest in Peace, and all of these cards I'm about to get to in just a moment <laughs> for another card coming up. So, the, you... If you are okay with modern looking like Vintage and Legacy, maybe it's not too bad. And when you watch 
dredge in action, that's usually how it works. Most of the time they win game one, if they lose it's in the sideboard games. That's not what, certainly not what the people at Wizards want it to look like. And personally I'm okay with that. I would like to make it as much about skill as possible rather than let me mulligan down to rest in peace. Just hope I have it. That's not, that's not exhilarating magic. Now, as much as I like piloting dredge, I really do. It's also the case that it doesn't look good on camera with the new rules, so. But that's a, that's a coverage thing. That that doesn't really bear mechanically. Yeah. Yeah, dredge is strong. Dredge may be too strong, but it's definitely not the direction they want modern to go. Standard. Standard cards. Let's start with Big Mama. <laughs> Imrakul the Promised End. This is six or seven mana, all too often six mana, for this Mind Slaver effect that just wrecks the game for the opponent. That they can't do much about. You can't counter it, notwithstanding summary dismissal, and instance won't do the job. So, stasis snare or bust. I'm sorry, <laughs> Imrakul. Now, even though this might actually be the easiest, or at least it's the one I've seen the most consensus on, this might be the easiest one to ban. To me, the problem isn't Imrakul. That sounds, give me just a second. I promise I'm, I'm, I have a point. The, prom the problem isn't Imrakul. It's not Delirium. The problem is the lack of answers to Delirium. See, when Innistrad was around, you had Flashback, and you had a lot of Graveyard Matters effects, and then Return to Ravnica comes around, and what do they print? Rest in Peace. And Ash Zealot. They're there to keep those cards in check. They're supposed to keep a mechanic that might have been a little bit pushed, might be, from overwhelming everyone. If you play white, you now have a sideboard answer to all of that. And then, of course, Dryad Militant, etc. You get the idea. There were answers. What do we have nowadays? We don't have a Rest in Peace. We don't have a Nile Spellbomb. We don't have a Relic Regenitus. We don't have a Tormod's Crypt. We don't even have a Bajuka Bog. They didn't do a Bajuka Bog reprint. We have Zendikar again. As a result, yeah, you have Delirium. It's not being held in check by anything, main boardable or sideable. So sideboardable. And yeah, that's a bit of an exaggeration. We do have some sideways answers to it, but nothing to that extent. We don't have a rest in peace level of effect. And as a result, Delirium is just too easy to turn on. It's It would not be a problem. Imrakul would not be a problem if you couldn't consistently make Imrakul six or seven mana. If the opponent plays a card or two and suddenly Imrakul's back to 13, or even 10 or 11 or 12, then Imrakul doesn't break the format. But on the other hand, from a design standpoint, you have all these Delirium cards and you want people to play with the Delirium cards. And so if there are too many answers, or if the answers are too good, if even one answer is too good, especially if it's colorless like the artifacts I mentioned, then maybe people don't buy your packs. So I can kind of see where they're coming from. And also, they designed these sets long before they're released, and so they might not have been able to make changes in time. You know, they, they couldn't anticipate how strong Imrakul could be, perhaps. Which is why Imrakul is banned, I would submit. I would be surprised if that weren't at least part of the story. Uh, speaking of artifacts that can go into every deck, we have a Smuggler's Copter. I have a confession to make. One of the most viewed deck techs on my channel is Mono Blue Ancient Energy. And I promise I have a point here. And I'm actually kind of ashamed of that deck tech. I, I, I am using it to teach myself to be more careful. Because I recommended a deck that, as you can see from the gameplay footage afterwards, fundamentally does not work. It's not that I didn't play test it, I did, but those must have been outliers or something about my metagame in playtesting or something like that. What I found out later on as I played with the deck afterwards is that, you know what it needed? Smuggler's Copter! <laughs> 
just replace I had at one point uh, Hedron Archive, at another point I had Cultivator's Caravan. No, just Smuggler's Copter. Every deck can run Smuggler's Copter. The, that's that's pretty much the issue. It's a, uh, it's cheap to get out. It's two mana. It's three three. It loots. It flies. It only has crew one. What doesn't it do? It in a format when you want. Uh, they they word it elegantly here. I think we want planeswalkers, sorcery speed removal, and a variety of vehicles to be viable options. And believe removing smuggler's copter will allow them to flourish again. So yeah. Planeswalkers, with the exception of Teferi, do everything they do at sorcery speed, and that doesn't usually work. We don't have any, well, we don't have any dedicated artifact slaying planeswalkers running around right now. And even if we did, they'd be at sorcery speed. You know, Chandra, Torch of Defiance, can't flame slash it on your turn. I'm sorry, we, we printed this awesomely pow- Now granted, neither could Jace the Mind Sculptor, if we're trying to make that comparison. But... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, in all seriousness, the fact that it can so easily be put into so many decks gets around so much removal. I mean, Harnessed Lightning in every red deck, specifically because of this card. Specifically. Incendiary Flow, not so much. It's Sorcery Speed. Collective Defiance, eh, it kills Kalitas, but Sorcery Speed. You get the idea. No, Harness Lightning is the spell of choice because Instant Speed. And, and they're printing Shock in Aether Revolt. A lot of good that would do if they didn't ban the Copter, the Looter Scooter. That one makes a lot of sense to me. It's unfortunate since it's such a new set, and it's not memory jar. It's not it's not that broke broken, that abrasive, but it is that prevalent. It's that overwhelmingly prevalent. Imagine this is almost like oh, what's a good example? Um almost like Umazawa's Jite in that when it was in standard, every deck would run it. But why wouldn't you? Or uh in Yu-Gi-Oh, Pot of Greed. There is no opportunity cost to that card. Why wouldn't you run as many copies as they let you run? Now, granted, way back in the day, that's been banned since before some of you were born, I imagine. But there we go. So, just anything that can too easily be put into every deck diminishes creativity, too powerful, yada yada. Next, lastly, probably least, <laughs> Reflector Mage. So, Blue-White Flash has been a thing. We, we've hit, I want to say, three different decks, but Smuggler's Copter could go into either of those decks, but Blue-White Flash it could definitely. So, but ult usually, three different decks, right? And there are quite a few cards that you could hit in the Blue-White Flash decks. Absolutely. For example, just off the top of my head, obviously they picked Reflector Mage, but you could pick Spell Queller, uh, you could pick Selfless Spirit, but if you pick one of those, then you hurt the Spirit's deck. And I don't think they want to try to do that. Uh, they want Spirits to still be viable, and Tribals in Standard tend to be a, a fragile Jenga tower. You can take one piece out and the whole thing will shatter, because they already have so few tools already. You know, think allies or vampires or spirits, or werewolves, or now Aetherborn, I suppose, uh, in standard, there aren't that many of them. Uh, allies, I guess there are. And yeah, humans, back when they were in Indistar, there were a lot of good humans, so you had a lot of good selection, but there are a lot of humans in every set. They're almost the exception that proves the rule. If you're going to take something out, try not to take out a spirit. Okay, but then what else can we take? Well, Reflector Mage is a good tempo card. It's been crazy since Collected Company was a thing. <laughs> it's been crazy since then. Not just good. Uh, it puts you so far ahead by out-tempoing your opponent. And with the ability to blink it or get more, it's just it puts you too far ahead of the opponent. In a deck that's already good at keeping them off their feet. 
even their creatures are counter spells. So, you know, think, uh, oh, what's it called? Mausoleum Wanderer, I believe. The little one drop that judges familiar spirit is a counter spell. Spell Queller is a counter spell. Selfless Spirit feels like a counter spell sometimes. You get the idea. Oh, yeah, and then Avicen can sometimes feel like a counter spell. Alright. Obviously, that's the one that I know the least about. It's not one that I've ever actually had the chance to play, not to play against too much. So, unfortunately, I'm not as knowledgeable about that. But it seems to make sense that... Well, and they talk about we had, you know, what was the way they worded it? Other cards were discussed to check blue or uh, white-blue flash, but Reflector Mage came up time and time again as both frustrating and a targeted way to diminish the white-blue flash deck. Let's say we hit Spell Queller. We'll hit White Blue Flash and Spirits. Reflector Mage sees play in this deck. Yeah, this specific deck. Not really outside of that. I think that's essentially the reason. Alright, and that's it. Those are the, uh, <laughs> the bannings that we have. I, I had been expecting Golgari Grave Troll at some point. I thought that shoe was going to drop at some point. I don't know if I would have ever banned it myself, maybe, maybe not, but I, I certainly don't blame them for doing that. I've already been tinkering with, uh, again I mentioned, uh, Army of the Dredged is a, uh, a deck that uses Crypt of Agadim. Crypt of Agadim cares about black creatures being in the graveyard. Golgari Grave Troll isn't a black creature. Even though it has the most dredge of any creature in the game, it isn't black, so we'll take out Golgari Grave Troll, we'll put in a few more creatures, Necroplasm, I think, and we'll find a way to make that work. Um, it, you know, it'll survive. If you want to try to run Dredge in the new format without Golgari Grave Troll, may I recommend that. So Dredge players, don't go sell off all of your pieces. I'll put out a deck tech in a few days, at least give that a look. Maybe give that a try if you'd like. I, it's a fun deck. It's a very fun deck. Making 10 mana on turn 3 is always exciting, right? And you're not playing Tron. 10 mana on turn 3 and you're not playing Tron. And it's all colored mana. Uh, but Gitaxian Probe, I, I think, is fine. I, you know, it, it's... it's I, even though it hurts me, I recognize it's better for the format as a whole, so I'm okay with that. And, and it makes more sense, I think, than a lot of, like if they had banned the Glistener Elf, yeah, that would that would nerf Infect, ultimately, that would wreck Infect, and then you would still have other decks that are using Gitaxian Pro, like Death Shadow Zoo, that wouldn't do anything to them. They would still be, if what you're trying to fix is an, a hyper-fast modern, Gitaxian Probe makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Plus, banning Gitaxian Probe nerfs Gl Glistener Elf enough anyway, I, I, I think. From my perspective, it certainly does. Alright, take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Actually, I want to say one more thing while I'm on it. If you're playing Infect, or to all my fellow Infect pilots out there, if you can't play Gitaxian Probe, let's say you don't have a Gitaxian Probe in your hand, well, what do you do? I always, as a, as a cautious player, I assume that my opponent has the answer. If I, if I don't know what they're on, or I know they're on a deck that has removal, I pretty much always operate under the assumption, unless they give me a reason to do otherwise, that they have the removal spell in hand. As such, it's easy for me to say, what'll I swap Gitaxian Probe out for? More protection spells. Unless Eldrazi is a huge part of my meta, I'm probably going up to four Vines, four Blossoming Defense, four Apostles Blessings. I kid you not. <laughs> I'm just going to operate under the assumption every time that my opponent has it. Uh, that's I'm not a very all-in Infect player, and I might mix it up every now and then just so that my especially people I play against all the time don't get that hard read and start you know, taking advantage of that fact. TJ Pool, I know you're watching. I'm saying this to you. <laughs> I'm saying this to you, man. Alright, well that's it. Take care, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye!